Let's talk about a hip shift during the deadlift. So this is a little bit more common to me. Uh, you'll get it in squatting and uh, you'll get like, you'll get the knee caving, knee positions in squatting and everything, but the knee caving is easier to see in squatting, harder to see in deadlifting. But when you're deadlifting, it's usually really easy to see a hip shift. And so if I'm setting up kind of symmetrical here, it might look like this. And I know that's subtle, but if you can kind of see where my weight is and what my legs are doing, you'll see this left leg is out a little bit more and this right leg is in a little bit more underneath my center of mass. And you'll just be able to pick that out when you watch a video of yourself or you watch someone else do this and you'll say, okay, that is a hip shift. Now, what do we do about it? So if I shift to one direction, my foot will, it's a great band, right, by the way. Uh, if I shift to one direction, my feet will roll accordingly. So if I shift to the left, my left foot supinates, my right foot pronates. My left arches get really high, my right arches get really flat. Hopefully that makes sense so far. Now, all we might want to do is just cue those feet. And that's why I stress this feel your whole foot cue all the time, because it works really well for all sorts of different cues, especially this shifting, which is the most complicated fix of any, you know, error that somebody's going to make in a lift. Okay. Very difficult. Generally, it's usually a pretty long process. It doesn't change overnight. So if I'm shifting to the left, and my left foot is supinated, my right foot is pronated, then all I'm gonna say is, hey, I want you to set your feet the other way, set your feet back where they were, feel that out, and then I want you to kind of end somewhere in the middle. And now go really slowly, keep feeling those feet, and push evenly within those feet. I want even pressure between your heel, your big toe, and your little toe okay, or the base of your big toe and the base of your little toe. And that just lines the foot up to where it's in a more neutral foot position. Simple as that, right? <laughs> Other things that you might think about. So if you, if you can't just cue the feet and that's maybe not doing it all, then you gotta get the muscles that are shifting you over that way. And so we're gonna simplify it here and we're gonna talk about, let's say we're gonna talk about three. We're gonna talk about the inner thighs. We're going to talk about the outer hips and we're going to talk about the abs. And so if I shift again to the left, then generally the weight pushes my hip bone up and turns my left abs on. It shortens my left abs. They become concentrically oriented. They become pretty good at turning on. Okay. And so they will hold me here. If I don't let go of the ab, I can't shift over because this is awkward and hurts my back, but this is kind of normal in given situations. Okay. This is awkward and hurts my back because I'm over here on my right, but my upper body is over here on my left. Okay. So if I shift over, I got to do this, right? I'm exaggerating here so you can see it, but this is maybe a little bit more normal maybe like this. And this is what salsa is. And this is why my clients need to dance so that they can understand rhythm and they can understand movement and they can understand rib cage motion. I'm talking to one in particular. Okay. So shift over. We got the ab. The ab keeps me over there. Now the other muscle that's going to pull me over to this side is the inner thigh. If you think about my legs like this, if I have my inner thigh here as like my pecs, they pull inward, right? If one pulls inward, it pulls me to that side. If the other pulls inward, it pulls me to that side. And then the opposite on the other side. If I get pulled over to the left by the left inner thigh, then the right outside hip is pushing me away from the right. Okay, and so those three muscles are gonna work in concert with one another. So maybe we need to address them. I would just eyeball it for now. You can, you know, you can do whatever mobility test you've learned, uh, Googling, searching the internet, or whatever you learned at a class or something. I don't, I don't know what you read, right? But Think about this in the context of those three muscles. If it looks like you're really crunched, try to uncrunch, okay? And if it looks like your hips are just really shifted, then try to find a way to turn off the one inner thigh and the other outside hip and turn on the vice versa, 
Okay, so if I'm shifting over to the left, I know I have a left inner thigh that's overactive and a right outside hip that's overactive. Then what I'm gonna do is try to turn on the left outside hip and the right inner thigh. Maybe, you know, I wouldn't say use those as cues because I think those are bad cues. I'd rather just leave you to your automatic training of the deadlift, but I can use these muscles in my accessory lifts, right? I can do clamshells for glute strengthening, but I can use them for glute positioning because the problem isn't that they're weak, it's that they're malpositioned. I can use them specifically on one side only to fix my one side shift because I only need it on one side. I don't need it on both sides, sometimes. <laughs> Okay. So this is a very complex topic. I'm trying to give you something that you can, you know, act upon. Um, we could talk about this for three hours if you want. Uh, feel free to shoot me an email, <laughs> lance at lancegoinky.com, or just leave a comment below.